Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 39. This episode is McKenna Fellows, who you definitely know online. She's Call Me Snips on uh, Instagram. She's Nine Lives Cosplay on Facebook. But she, uh, I, there's no way you haven't seen a picture of her. She is the Mortis version of Ahsoka from Celebration and all over the internet. Um, she's also an incredible graphic designer. Uh, anyone who's listening who's in the 501st was 501st Friends. Um, you've most likely seen her work. It's amazing, just like she is. Uh, but this episode, we talk about uh, her growing up in North Carolina, because she's from there too, but she actually grew up there. We talk about breaking bones, which uh, she's uh, she's broken a lot of them. She's broken a lot of them. And uh, she broke her nose in like a sideways way, not like hitting it up front, which God had to hurt. But, you know, she's super tough, and she was a goalie, which is awesome. Uh, we talk about hockey, uh, how she got into graphic design, Clone Wars, obviously. Um, her different versions of Ahsoka costumes that she has, meeting Ashley Eckstein, and how she got a private tour at Lucasfilm by a random elevator encounter. I can't make this stuff up, guys. I don't know how I keep finding such incredible people and tricking them into talking to me for a little bit. But, man, it is great. This podcast is, like, one of the best things I've ever done. And it's because of people like McKenna uh, coming on, who you are going to love. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to stop. I'm I'm going to stop delaying. Enjoy this episode, number 39 of the Interesting Podcast, with McKenna Fellows. Theme song time. Yeah, sorry too. I worked through I think seven or eight of uh, the dorky diva ones while at work. So sweet, yeah. You you probably noticed a decline as soon as I got on there. <laughs> no, I know you really love Qui Gon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I will proudly admit to that one. But I did. Uh, I've done two podcasts so far that it didn't record, and uh, oh. oh boy, one of them was in person, which was bad. So I have these mics hooked into an H4N Zoom recorder, mm-hmm. and um, I pressed the play button instead of the record button, oh, and no. had, it was like one of the best talks I've ever had. Like she was crying at some points and laughing, and it was just the best thing ever. And then we're like, okay, that was good. That was really good. All right, so we'll. Uh, and then I just see the numbers going by. I was like, what is that? And I like kind of hear something, and uh, it was playing the previous <laughs> one that I'd recorded. And uh, the only thing worse than that happening to you is when you have to look at the person in the eye and be like, <laughs> oh, uh, hmm, this happened. And then the other one was Daniel Barry uh, from the Force Cast. The oh. program that I had before this one didn't record at all. It just it just stopped recording. Luckily, he recorded on his end. So I was oh, like, oh, idea. thank God. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he saved me. He saved me like crazy. This is nuts. I'm like... I'm I'm glow in the dark right now. Uh, I am too. I got Irish and Scandinavian blood. Same. The lights go out and I glow. Yeah, I like to say I get sunburned from the fridge light. Yeah. The, <laughs> the... So like the summer in California, I'm just gonna have to hide. Just get toasted. Yeah. But yeah, how are you? How's your day going? I'm doing well. Good. It's still a lot of transition with uh, my move out here. Sure. So. Yeah, cause... my phone's ringing. You just yes, moved thank there. You. Yeah, I moved. I started the drive out in like mid-November, but with all the holidays, I think I've been here maybe a month. Oh, so you dro- you drove across country. Bold. Yep. Very bold. With my parents. Oh, good. At least you had help. <laughs> well, well as I don't help, know how helpful yeah, I was about to say. Maybe not. Maybe not. That could They're be. They're the ones who like to argue with your, your phone's GPS and oh, try to dig course. out a map. Yeah. <laughs> like... That's not what it says here. 
And yeah, yeah. Like, but they're watching us from space. Like, we're not going to get lost. Yeah. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> How long did it take you? How long was the drive? We did it in four days, I think. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. So I wanted to just make it three that last few hours, but they're like, we're sleepy. And I'm like, well, I'll drive. Yeah. It's my car. <laughs> Don't be. I want to go. Yep. Yeah. Right on, right on. You're from North Carolina. I am. Me too. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I did some slight stalking. Yeah, good, so. good. I was good. like, oh, yeah. my home, my home state. Yeah. Out what, east, though. What part are you from? Just outside of Raleigh. Mm. Uh, Apex, okay. if that means anything. Yeah. Carrie. Okay. Yeah. Right, in place, yeah, right outside of Raleigh. Yep. I'm, from, <laughs> I'm from the Outer Banks. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. I used to go every summer. Yeah, there's a, a place called Elizabeth City. I was born yep. there because that was cool. the nearest hospital. <laughs> and then I lived on a farm right outside of there. Nice. And then I moved to Florida, which everyone on my show has heard like a hundred times now because I repeat <laughs> myself. <laughs> I'm so bad about that. I, I just started re-listening to the episodes because I, I hate the sound of my voice. Um, oh, me too. But my memory's so bad that it's like I'm hearing it for the first time and I'm like, oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> I learn, I repeat myself a lot. Like yeah. you like, I mean, you know, like you said, uh, Brian likes Quagon. That's a fact <laughs> that you will hear <laughs> over and over and over. over and over again. But that's cool. So how was, so you spent more time in North Carolina than even I did. Cause I was only there till I was like six and then I moved to Florida. So yes. what's it like actually growing up there? <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. Um, it's a nice area. We've got really good schools and universities, kind of a, a mix of cultures and all that. Um, the sports are fun. So growing up, I was really into sports as well as Star Wars. So cool. Um, my family got involved in both of those things pretty often. Um, mm. But I lived there my entire life within the same county, Wake County. That's common. So this move was a bit of a shakeup. And my entire extended family also lives um, out there. I think my furthest relative was 45 minutes away, if that. Sounds about right. That's so bad. now they're like, uh, you're like 3,000 miles away now? <laughs> Slightly farther. A little bit farther. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It must be a North Carolina thing because my entire family is still there in the same oh, yeah? place. Uh, like, they're all there. Elizabeth City. It's really Grandy. nice. For people who have never been, I'm like, well, it's a really nice area. It's got a lot of things to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it. yeah, I'm trying to think most of the people I know who have either born and raised there have lived there forever or people have moved from like uh new york mm -hmm. and new jersey a lot sure um they love it down there and so me too people, nice are, people are much nicer than uh yeah. where i live now <laughs> i held a door open for someone the other day because it was like a young lady with a huge baby stroller and like I don't know if she was babysitting what, but she had a bunch of kids with her. And I was like, oh, yeah, let me get that. She looked at me like I was diseased. And I was like, ah, uh, right? you're welcome. <laughs> I, same, same thing happens to me. It's so weird. You're like, oh, you don't have manners anywhere else. It's so strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, like you I, say, bless your heart. And people are like, you actually say that? And I'm like, well, I've said it more that I've moved out yeah. here than I ever did at home. <laughs> right. I feel like I have to pick up the pieces around here. Yep. Represent. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm I'm yes sir, no ma'am all the time. Oh yeah. And everyone's mm -hmm. like, What's 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 wrong? I was like, nothing, yeah. I'm being polite, I guess. Just They've told me it's like don't call me that it makes me feel old and I'm like Yeah, it's like okay. I don't know what else to call you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your name. And even e then I'd probably call you by your name with miss in front of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so strange. Like I have I have friends that I grew up with here and to this day I still call them their parents by like Mr. and Mrs. It was yep. like Mr. Rob, Miss Jesse. Even as an adult, I'm like, yeah, it's who it is. It's so strange. Even so, when talking about like you know these Star Wars celebrities, I want to say like Mr. Filoni or you know Mrs. Eckstein. Right? Like right. Like I, I Ashley. Like if I ever see her again, I'm gonna be like, hi, this is uh, 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 Ashley. I'm so, I'm so weird about it. My fiance's mom is still in my phone as Mrs. Moore. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She doesn't know that. Don't tell her. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's fun. That's fun. You got to you got to grow up there. Did you see a lot of the state, or you kind of just stuck around? Cause, uh, yeah, we would. Uh, we went out to the Outer Banks um, almost every summer when I was at least in middle school. Really? So you actually yeah. know it? Yes. Right hey. We stayed in uh, Chickamacomico. Oh, sweet. Right yep. On. Um, my I had a really good friend growing up. She was actually Canadian, but oh, they moved sweet. down here or down there, and. Mm. Uh, 
they used to go all the time to like windsurf and kiteboard. Oh, cool. And all that stuff. So they have since moved to the Outer Banks. Right on. Uh, so I've, yeah, I've camped on the sound side during a hurricane. Hey, there you go. Don't recommend. Earn your stripes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun. What happened? Um, Tell me. You can't just graze over that. <laughs> well, luckily we were okay. Um, it was just very windy and very wet and mm-hmm. very, like, the sky was black. Okay. Uh, That's kind of cool. I, I know of another gentleman who is kind of the town crazy. Um, all I know is that he's French. And his last and name likes... is Balance. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, he likes to wear, uh, I think, Speedos is his like, wardrobe, his entire wardrobe. I should hope. And there was a hurricane, and he was sleeping in his tent, and he was washed down Highway 12. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> and the highway patrol found him, like, I think the next day. I th- hope it was the next day. Yeah. <laughs> but he uh, did not have any clothes on him or in his tent. Oh, so... Lost a Speedo. The one thing he had left. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I was like, oh, that's... That's not good. Yeesh. Oh man, it's been okay. Awkward so police car ride. Of course, it's been <laughs> it's been really cold here. How has it been in California? Because it gets like it's warm. During, it's perfect during the day, and then it's cold at night. Has mm-hmm. the weather been affecting you guys there? It's been kind of cold for a while, but I think like when Savannah and I went to Disney, it was pushing ninety. Oh, cool. Um, not above ninety, sure. and then uh, recently it's gotten even hotter. Like back up to the high 80s and i'm like it's january yeah. there's snow at home <laughs> yeah for real what is happening for real and north carolina has like weird snow and not yes. a lot of people get that because you get like when you're more inland you know you get like feet of snow north carolina is like wet there's a lot of like mud involved it's strange mm-hmm. like so so weird i'm not made for the cold my blood's thinned out since moving to yeah. florida it's bad it's bad. Like, I don't think I'll ever move north of where I was in North Carolina. No. I'd die. I'd, I yeah, would just die. I, just, I wouldn't leave the house, and my yeah. heating would be ridiculous. <laughs> That's right. I went to, uh, when my younger brother graduated basic training, he was in Georgia, and there was a night when I got to, like, 35, I want to say. And we went okay. out to eat, and as we walked out of the restaurant, I was, like, shaking. I was like, this is the worst thing ever. It was horrible. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I'm from even farther north here. Yeah. Awful awful so i saw a video you posted playing flute yes you play flute oh my. i do play flute and it's related to star wars amazing that's of most talk, things talk to me talk to me when did you start um, why flute okay why flute um growing up when they did the i think the vhs release where they replaced yub nub with victory celebration oh my Jedi. Oh heard my that God. song and i'm like I need to learn how to play this. Great and I was song. like, Mom, what what instrument is this? And she's like, it's a flute. Really? Or, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Some sort of pan flute, wooden flute. Sure. And she had actually played in her high school marching band and was like a flag twirler as well. Oh, cool. So she had a very nice flute to give me. And then in middle school, I joined the band. And, hey. yep, I uh, always had my... It was Star Wars books mostly, but then I also had Pirates of the Caribbean, Harry Potter, all the great nerd fandoms, and I would just play that music all the time. And they're like, okay, but if we have a concert coming up, we should probably yeah. play our <laughs> actual music. I'm like, but this is more fun. That's right. You're like, how, how do we make our concert this music? You play Duel of the Fates. That's how. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did you, did you ever play Star Wars music? <laughs> no, I wanted to. Same. Same. We played um, Lord of the Rings medley once, though. What? That's amazing. So that kind of cool. I remember, I think my junior or senior year, we did, uh, uh, for Symphonic Season, we did the Braveheart uh, nice. soundtrack. Oh, my God. Amazing. amazing. Soundtracks are always more fun to play. Agreed. Because you have, it's because you know what they're, they, you know what they sound like going into it. And then it. you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm playing it. Like, exactly. I, I'm playing it. Where before you're like, okay, that's a 16th note. Why, why a 16th note? This is awful. <laughs> yeah, when it played, it's just black. Yeah. It's like, uh, did that's it, too many notes. Did it take you a while to pick up flute, like how to do it correctly? Not really. Um, I don't know if that's just thanks to my mom having some musical talent, um, mm-hmm. but I, I also played guitar and messed around with the piano a little bit, so they're all C instruments, so I was able to kind of fumble my way through a lot of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I actually picked up the piccolo, too, which was harder. Um, really? Just because you feel like you're going to pass out after you're done playing. Tiny little thing. Does it, does, a d- lot of air. Oh, really? It requires more. Didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Didn't know that at all. So I'm assuming you were better at flute. 
Yeah, it's much easier to sound like a dying cat on the piccolo. And, you know, if you're not really feeling sure. it, then you should just not do it. Sure, yeah. <laughs> hey, dying cat is better than... <laughs> this, this isn't working at all. What's that? It worked better when I had a bottle. Yep. Horrible. Yep. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I tried, because it flutes. Flutes very, very pretty, when done correctly. It is. When done yes. correctly. <laughs> like uh, Leia's theme. Yeah. The one I had played, I think, is the video. Yes, it was. It was amazing. So, yeah. So you played. You started in middle school. You said, and it. Yes. You, so you didn't start because of a music program. You started because of Star Wars. You wanted to play a song. <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I see. I started playing trombone in middle school because uh i just wanted to learn an instrument and it mm -hmm. was trombone specifically for that i was like that's the only <laughs> instrument you can do that outside of like one of those little slide whistles it's like yep. i, I want to make the cartoon noise so i did that there you go. and the first thing star wars music but oh, yeah. i'm with you victory celebration is one of my favorite pieces in all of star wars it just instantly cheers me up yes it's i've talked to savannah about this before where like one of my biggest problems I have with episode seven is I love the ending of episode six. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, the good guys won. And like I, the, my first yeah. time I ever went to Star Wars weekends, it was playing down the streets. And I was like, this is what I'm talking about. Mm, <laughs> this is it. This is the theme. Bad guys, you're going to lose for once. And then episode seven comes around. And you're like, just kidding. It's worse. You came back. There's, there's space Nazis. Han and Leia <laughs> didn't end up together. Um, Ewoks are probably crushing. all dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. I'm still not over it. I'm still not over <laughs> it. But I love Victory Celebration. It is incredible. So, do you still play? Obviously, occasionally, I'm guessing. Occasionally, yeah. yeah. I I actually left it at home when I moved, um, and I've been missing it a lot. I'm probably gonna have it shipped out to myself here soon. Um, but also now I'm living in an apartment, mm -hmm. and flutes can be loud, so okay. I'll have to find a nice place to play where I won't. Uh, bother the neighbors or maybe they're star wars or john williams fans and they boom. won't mind boom <laughs> as long as you don't sound like a dying cat still i think you're i think you're in the gold no. you know has it's to a be. little bit better than that yeah, yeah. i'm not that rusty <laughs> that's right so did you play all through middle school and high school i played um until my freshman year of high school um okay the marching band was just too much of a commitment and i knew that i wanted to go into a creative field and i needed to take art classes mm -hmm. um so I ended up just doing concert band, um, which, you know, was half a, sem or a semester and versus the whole year. Um, and then I was able to take art classes, but I guess one of the flute players had moved during the summer. And so they sent people after me over summer break to try to recruit me to the marching yeah, band. Yeah, there you go. I was like, it'd be fun, but, you know, it's, I got to focus on, you know, the design, art. art and stuff I want to do in college, I think. Sure, sure. Was oh. art an interest that you had growing up as well? Like just for oh, yes. a while? Yeah? Yeah. I was always drawing um, usually my cats. I think hey. before Star Wars, my it obsession works. was cats. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> um, so I drew a lot of my family too. I used to draw my little brother with just like one single curly hair on top of his head. I don't know <laughs> what that was about. You drew him as a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, he would just be better if you were a cat. No, yeah, exactly. my brother's awesome. <laughs> he's, uh, he's awesome. He's my fellow Star Wars nerd, so. Amazing. But yeah, I would always be drawing or painting or um, building stuff. And, mm -hmm. like, I was obsessed with Halloween growing up, and so was my dad. Really? Um, so, like, I would go into the, the stores and see, like, the Amidala costumes from episode yes. one. And I, I was that for, like, two years. Like, so like resentful because i'm like this doesn't look like her costume in the movie <laughs> like there's so many inaccuracies and this is like in first grade me so like five perfect. six perfect <laughs> hey, that and came so in we handy. ended up oh yeah it did <laughs> so we would always uh make our costumes usually from then on out so i think there was a picture i posted somewhat recently i don't remember where mm -hmm. but when i was nine i think i was ayla sakura what homemade costume yeah what? i'll have to post these on instagram to get more blackmail and then yes yes the next year i was shocked tea oh my god so that is amazing yeah those are costumes was... you do not see very often and you are no. knocking them out in elementary yep <laughs> i'm into <laughs> because it because it's like that was right when attack of the clones came out and yeah you know i was like there's 
girls and they have lightsabers and they're awesome. You only see them for a few seconds and I'm like, but they're there. That's all you need. That's all and you then, need. you know, later down the road, I found Clone Wars and Ahsoka and I'm like, this is what I wanted when I was growing up. Oh, oh, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> so, okay, when did you start, like, seriously putting in time into art? So you say you, you liked drawing from the beginning. You started into cats. And when you're like, <laughs> and when you're like I think I really want to do something in art. What, what did you decide? What did you want to do in art? Did you just like, I'm just going to be an artist? Because you said you, you, by the time you got to high school, you started going into like graphic design sort of mm-hmm. mentality. Yeah, I uh, kind of fell into it. I kind of always knew that my brain wasn't really wired for like math. I loved science, but um, just the math heavy stuff, I was just like, eh. and then I got into like honors chemistry in high school and that was the first class I ever had to study for. And I was like, what? uh, this is not great <laughs> yeah, i don't like it i don't think i'll be taking ap chemistry yeah fair. um so i had always done art classes and you know like when we did uh what are they called specials in elementary school where you like rotate through the different disciplines oh yeah it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. music art pe yep. like every day mm-hmm. and uh like art was always my favorite day of the week um sure i was probably the teacher's pet for a lot of the art teachers whatever works but in uh Maybe late middle school, early high school, I really got into hockey, of all things. What? Yeah, being a Southern. I actually played uh, two for a while, but I was a goalie. What? And I, yeah. And you were I a watched, goalie? Yeah. Because oh of uh, the local uh, professional, Cam Ward, yeah, when yeah. they won the uh, Stanley Cup, he also won MVP, and he just had an amazing season. Sure. So I was like, this is cool. I want to try it. Can't be that hard. Yeah. How do you ice skate? Please, easy. <laughs> Yeah, so I really got kind of obsessed with the way that they decorated their goalie masks because Cam Ward's especially is really interesting because it has a lot of North Carolina history on it with Blackbeard, sure. um, Queen Anne's Revenge. Um, it's got Hatteras on the back. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of cool little details. So then I would look through other goalies, and it was all airbrushed and so beautiful. So I started designing helmets for my friends or myself or just anyone or no one. Sure. Um, and then someone came along one day and was like, that's like kind of graphic design. And I was like, what's that? Uh-huh. So, so that's where <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll make a note of that. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, in high school, we had two classes, printing graphics one and printing graphics two, which mm-hmm. basically taught like the Adobe suite, um, like book binding, yeah. um, print versus digital, how to draw with tablets, stuff like that. And um, the teacher was amazing. She really encouraged me to like pursue it. Um, and she helped me do my portfolio and prepare for uh, interviews for design schools, which is such a competitive process. And I am so glad it's done and over with. Sure. So yeah, that's how I ended up in, in graphics. That is nuts. So your, your intro to graphic design was through hockey masks. Yes. What? <laughs> that is amazing. Hey, it's very weird. No, I love it. See, this is, this is a perfect example of why I have this show. <laughs> what how would you ever think a graphic artist as good as you are got <laughs> the idea from a hockey ma- okay you played hockey <laughs> how long did you play hockey because this um, is a prelude to a only for question. a couple of years did you break any bones oh yeah you have to that's what I, okay okay you want to you- guess what i broke <sighs> you had to, okay so you're a goalie okay did you that hmm. won't save me though no, it will not. It adds to it because the pucks are flying directly at you. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're only like 80 or 90 miles an hour, though. Oh, please. That's easy. <laughs> I kick that fast <laughs> in the morning before coffee. <laughs> okay, so, hmm. You got a mask on, so I'm assuming none got to your nose, which is good. Did you break your nose? I broke my nose. <laughs> How did you do that? Technically, it was street hockey. Okay, um, <laughs> there, so there's, but... there's knives involved. There's no yeah. rules. You have to wear bandanas. Yeah, no just face mask. And uh, a friend of mine just lifted her stick handled. super fast. The blade came and caught the side of my nose and crushed half of oh, it. Oh, no. It hit it that way. It didn't even hit it straight mm-hmm. on. Mm-mm. It literally just crushed one side. Oh. Closed. You know, you can't tell. So well done. You know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, okay, yep. that had to hurt. And one concussion. But I think that was it. Okay. Did you throw up? I did not throw up. If That's I did, good. it would have bounced on ice, apparently. Hey, right. There you go. <laughs> That's goalie, the rumor. goalie is easily the coolest position. I easily. think so. 
I, 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 we go to, my fiance and I go to hockey games pretty regularly down here because I just love nice. it. And um, whenever you see a goalie fight, it's, oh, it's, a, it's always super rare because it's like, they're not going to get involved. <laughs> they're always these big dudes with beards and stuff. But we saw one, I mean, we've been to like maybe eight games in the last few years. And one time did the goalie get involved and he grabbed the dude good. by his helmet, like by his face and just pulled him off his skates and just Ooh. beat him. And we're like, get it. It was amazing. It was amazing. That's low blow going for the face mask. But I yeah, I mean. Right. Just pulled him right yeah. off. I was like, don't mess it's with great the goalies. It's like two marshmallows <laughs> in a slap fight. I know, right? <laughs> and then their pads are so big that they can't actually reach them to yeah, hit no, them. Yeah, no, your range of motion is awful. I love it. It's like... You just, like, turn yourself into a projectile and hope for the best. Exactly. It, that's why he had to grab him and pull him down first. <laughs> like, it's, this is how goalies do. Yes. So your nose was first? That was the first thing you broke? Or that was one I, of the things you broke? I think that was actually the last thing I broke. Okay, well, go, go out strong. Go out strong. Yeah. So what was the first thing you broke, and was it during hockey? <laughs> it was not all of my other, I, okay, two incidents were on monkey bars, and Fair. the cool. other one was jumping off like a two-foot retaining wall that okay. I'm not proud of. Oh, uh, broke, I'll make you feel better. I'll make you feel better in a minute. So you broke your foot? That sucks. Yeah. You got crutches, I'm yeah. assuming. Okay. Which are awful, especially if you have broken your wrist in the past. Hey, there you go. Okay, so yep. we got so we got your foot, your wrist, your nose, and collar. You broke your collarbone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard that one's like as inconvenient as it gets. Yep, because right. you can't do anything about it. Yeah, just, sorry. I've heard the same with ribs. I've never broken Ooh. a rib, but I've heard ribs. It just hurts to breathe, and like I mean, they wrap you up, but it doesn't really do anything. Oh. I've broken both my arms. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Not at the same time, I hope. No, no, years <laughs> apart, which was good. No. Here's I'll make you feel better about how you broke anything. So my left arm, right? I was at I was in um this youth group and they were building this building across and like, all right, we're gonna have our, our youth group at this building over here and we're just gonna race to it. I was like, All right, sweet. And there was a construction site to to the left of it and I was like, Please I'm going to run through this construction site because that way I don't have to go the full curve. I could just break line through here. And in the midst of that, I tripped on the gravel and ate it. And, then, <laughs> and, and I just kept on going. I like went and I was like, all right, fine. I get there and we're, we're, they're giving the lesson and whatever. And halfway through, I'm like, my elbow really hurts. And like, I'm oh. with my friend. I was like, I don't know why it just really hurts. And he's like, no, it's fine. So I just sat there and I'm like, all right, yeah, it's good. It's good. Afterwards, I was like, no, it it really hurts now. And they had, <laughs> they had like a, a quote unquote nurse, uh, on staff. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, it's not broken because if it was, you'd be screaming. And I was like 12 at the time. I'm That's like, what they always say. Right. Right. It's like, you don't know me. And so, <laughs> so I was like, okay, obviously it's not broken. Otherwise I'd be screaming. So I get home. I was like, my elbow hurts cause I fell on it, but we're fine. So I went home, acted like it was nothing, went to sleep. And at like oh. three in the morning, I woke up and I just started crying. I was like, this is bad. And they took me to the ER and it was broken in three places. Yep. Because I just, I tripped. I tripped while cheating in a race. <laughs> I think that's karma. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, you know what? Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel cool knowing that at 12, I was like, Psh, it's nothing. And it was broken yeah. in three places. That's the only redeeming part of this story. Uh, then you it broke it pretty not, good. Yeah, I did a good job. I did a good job. I got a cast and everything, so that that was mm-hmm. fun. You know, it's pretty cool. I mean, I don't want to brag. Until they start to smell. Oh my god! Then you're like, <laughs> it itches, and you gotta find something. Yep. Yeah. I almost lost a pin cap in mine, and I was like, oh, the doctor's oh. gonna cut it off, and I'm gonna get in trouble because a pin cap's gonna fall out. <laughs> I was like in fifth grade. Yeah, that's that's you know what? That's a fair concern. When I broke when I when I uh, broke my other arm. I fell from a tree and landed on this like metal piece and it Ooh, was my... see, that's a cool story. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pfft, metal piece, please. I mean, I broke it in a fight with another <laughs> nine year old and, uh, and a bear. Uh, yeah. And, and a bear. It was a nine year old bear. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was my right arm. And I remember being like, Oh sweet. I don't have to do schoolwork because I'm right handed. And my mm-hmm. teacher was not having it. She's like, just take your time with your left. I'm like, what, what is this? That happened to uh my best friend and college roommate and also my younger brother they both broke their right arms same playground same school <laughs> it's cursed yeah. um, like i think i was the 
ninth kid in six days of a brand new school opening to break something on that monkey bars. That is so unsafe. Yep. <laughs> and those monkey bars are still there. I think they are. <laughs> I should hope so. People can go to the, these monkey bars. That's, yeah. That's nuts. In a, in a week, nine kids. Can you imagine being mm -hmm. the like teacher that overwatches the recess and you see kids? There's another one. Uh, <laughs> yep. Within a week. Just nope, kids, we lost another one. Just kids breaking. <laughs> yeah, there was a kindergartner who was just running and tripped and fell and broke both of his wrists. Oh, my just God. Just that recycled tire stuff, but it wasn't up to code, I guess. Oh, God. That's yeah. awful. I, I fell off, and probably from like six feet or so. They were pretty high, and I fell flat on my back with my arms out beside oh. me. But my left wrist, I broke it right where the wrist meets the hand. It looked like Ooh. Harry's from oh, when really? his bones all disappear. Mm. Like, oh yeah, it, just yeah, no bone. It's bad Ooh. when the like nurses at the hospital are like going to grab other people and like, come look at this. Because <laughs> that means you weren't in the textbook. Yeah, oh my God, grab Madame Pomfrey quickly. Yeah. Oh man, that's uh, that's gross. <laughs> yeah, it was. I didn't look at it for like two days until they had it like in a cast, so I knew I couldn't see it. I have really bad tendons in my wrists. Because for years and years and years, uh, uh, I would grab the blanket like this and kind of roll it up towards me and just sleep like Ooh. this for like mm -hmm. years on end. And after a while, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna, pu I'm gonna put some, uh, I'm gonna put some weight on this, and then it started hurting one day. Uh, don't recommend that. But <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great though. Broken bones. So you've had a total of how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five that I know of. Five that you know of. I like it. Yeah. Like, you ever Not sure about some fingers and toes. Yeah, maybe. those those don't count, please. They don't count. Yeah, who counts those? No <laughs> self-respecting hockey player I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. So, were you? Did you start ice skating before hockey, or did you learn playing hockey? Maybe the... like once or twice. Otherwise, I learned in all that gear. <laughs> That's amazing. Are you good at ice skating? Because I'm horrible. No, I am. I should hope so. Yeah, that, that was backwards a, that was is still kind of hard, but oh. with the like, with the goalie, all you have to do is kind of like wiggle yourself backwards. I can't like beautifully skate backwards like the like the D men can. I can't beautifully skate at all. <laughs> <laughs> I I the I don't go ice skating very much, which is uh, very much why I'm horrible at it. But we have a skating rink down here, mm -hmm. and um, I'm very proud to say that I, after a half an hour, I got off of the wall. Nice. So that's good. <laughs> you know, it's a I think it's easier than rollerblading if people give it a chance. You know, that's fair. That's fair. I uh, am equally You can have bad something to dig both. into. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was the and one. If you like, eat it rollerblading, it hurts a lot more. Oh, for sure. The asphalt. Yeah. No thanks. No thanks. Mm -hmm. my, my brother was always better at that. So, like, when he went through like the rollerblading phase, I was like, I'm going to get a scooter because yep. I'm a scooter oh. guy. And <laughs> that's what I did. Yep, yeah, I remember those phases. Yeah, I always go with the the slightly less cooler version. Apparently, so I always wanted a skateboard, but I never got the skateboard. Uh, I can't do it because I was horrible. Same. I could somewhat stand on one. The That's about it. the irony of my last name is not lost on me, because uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> uh, I'm I don't have a whole lot of balance when you put wheels under me. It was, <laughs> it was horrible. I just so I got a um where I live. I live in this condo. And there's not a lot of uh, space to park our cars. So sometimes I have to park my car in this lot, which is like six condos down, right? It's like mm -hmm. extra parking. So for Christmas, I got a Razor scooter because, you know, if you're going to go real quick, you just get to the car yeah. real quick. And um, uh, one day I learned that Razor scooters, uh, the wheels have zero traction uh, when it comes to water on the road. Fun fact. Oh. Yeah. So um, I'm an adult now, so I can go pretty <laughs> fast on them. <laughs> so I'm going adult speeds. I'm going really fast. And I go to turn into my driveway, and the scooter just keeps going. It just <laughs> comes out from under me. And I'm not joking. I skid for like a foot and a half at least. Oh, I, yeah. And uh, the only thing worse than eating it as a 26-year-old man on a Razor scooter is, <laughs> is doing it in front of the lawn care people. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so I go to turn. Scooter goes flying. I skid on the ground, and I look up, and there's a guy with a leaf blower just looking down at me. <laughs> he didn't say anything. He didn't react. He's just like, 
hmm. making sure you're alive. So not even, just like stunned by what just <laughs> happened, which I can't blame him. I'm an adult and that just happened like right in front of him. I was two feet from him. He just looks down <laughs> at me and I was like, ha, 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 ha. walked over, picked up the scooter and like ran inside. I'm like, I'm almost impossible to embarrass. Not going to lie. Got pretty close. Got, pre- <laughs> got, pre- got, got pretty close with that one. Uh, so uh, on, on the on the art vein, because I'm very, very interested in this, because that was actually how I first uh, became introduced to you, was through your art. Really? Not through the Tegruda. <laughs> Correct. Correct. It was through your art, because I am in the 501st as well, and you've done mm-hmm. a lot of work for uh, buddies of mine. No. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, Joe Fab is a yeah. Wookie Fee is a real good friend of mine. Um, I just brought over one of his pens for Savannah tonight. Yes, yes. Joe's awesome. He's actually coming on because this is now binding. It's recorded. Joe, you have to come <laughs> on now. You have um, to do it, Joe. Ahsoka says you have to. Exactly. And you're a clone, so you don't have a choice. She outranks you. Um, yep. So, and you couldn't catch me, so... Exactly. Take that, hound. hound. <laughs> so, so did you practice? So you learned to do graphic design and stuff in high school. You took a class Mm -hmm. for it, and you learned to use all the products. Um, What do you do your art on as far as software and equipment? I, um, as far as, like, my computer, I have a Mm -hmm. Mac. um, I guess that's part of the designer life. When I was actually my sophomore year in college, they made us buy a specific Mac. Oh, okay. Which, of course, was, like, one of the most expensive ones, which is great. For real. Um, So it's Mac, and then I've got the Adobe Creative Suite, um, and... I am still paying a student price because I am still a student hey. and they can't prove that wrong because I still have my email. Get it. Get so it. So I have all of their programs, which is really cool. Um, I really only use three on a daily basis, either at work or like when I make the pens for people. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite is Illustrator. Yeah. Um, just because they're so clean and then you can scale them and you don't have to deal with uh, pixels and sure. ugliness that you can get in Photoshop. Um, so yeah, I use, I have a big document right now that's got, I don't know, 10 or 12 art boards in it and it's just all oh, clones. Oh yeah. And a couple, uh, Kanan pens, I think Kanan and Rebels. There you go. There you and go. I think I just did a Mandalorian the other day. It's not posted anywhere yet, but. <gasps> spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. And there'll that... be, there's more clones coming. There's lots more clones coming. Good. So many clones. Hey, you're very good at it. And Thank there you. is a, there is a demand. Yes, but and sure. I'm making my own uh, Ahsoka ones, finally. Finally. God. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole reason I brought you on here was for that announcement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There'll be lots. So. Yeah, sweet. That's cool. That's cool. So um, so you learned at school. That's neat. I did a mm-hmm. similar thing uh, to get the student price on Adobe because <laughs> yep. the not student price is crazy high. Yep. And it is significantly less. Still expensive. Significantly less. Um, I have CS5. Because I'm okay. old and I don't feel like doing the subscription, uh, but it's a pain. Oh my god! <laughs> I used uh, a friend's student ID to there buy to buy the. It was a Creative Suite Premium, I think is what it was mm-hmm. called. It came with like 20 programs, and it was like Premiere, Photoshop, After Effects, Story, Bridge, all the stuff. Yep. And it was for like 400 bucks. Yep. I was like, done, done. 20 programs for that, and I still use. CS5 today. Um yeah. I'm horrible at technology. <laughs> I've I've talked about how I'm I I'm terrible at anything technology, but my podcasts, I know how to use Premiere because I did videography mm-hmm. for a lot of years, but I don't know how to use like Audacity or um any of the sound editing stuff. So mm-hmm. what I do is I actually edit my podcasts in Premiere and just export the MP3. I was like, this no. counts. Yeah. It's like the most difficult way to do it, but it's the only way I know how. So that's fun. So, uh, yeah, that's, God, I'm just thinking about, there's got to be an easier way to do it, but because I don't know, <laughs> I just feel like an idiot. Uh, so, yeah. I've done yeah. a few things with After Effects and Premiere, and it's like I open them, and it's just like, there's a lot of buttons. Same. I, I thought about getting the new the newest uh, Adobe Premiere, and I got the trial. I was like, I'll just check it out, right? It's going to be like exactly the same. It's not. So I completely, I canceled the trial immediately and I was like, I'm going back to my safe space. Yep. It's horrible. It's horrible. So how long did it take you to get the hang of it? Like doing everything? Oh. Because it's it's a while. It's a while. Was it something that came naturally to you or did you have to keep going at it? 
I, I'm trying to think. I used my mom's uh, teacher status to get CS2 Ooh, Illustrator um, probably when I was in middle school. Cool. And I had no idea what I was doing. So I tried using that. Um, and then I remember the day, so I, it was like in high school where I discovered that the pen tool can do curves. What? You don't have to just click a bunch of like little tiny straight lines. You can do curves. <laughs> So that was life changing. The world um, open to you. So it's like a constant process because, like you said, they keep adding new stuff. They've added entire new programs, sure. like the character animator and within After Effects, I think. And then mm-hmm. there's a whole new thing now where it's like a 3D mock-up software where you can have 3D rendered like bugs, and I could put like the Dorky Diva logo on it if I wanted, oh. and then like render a really nice like photorealistic. Be like, this is what it would look like if you got a mug with your logo on it. Really? So, yeah. I haven't used it yet, but it looks pretty cool. So, when you... We'll just use an example, being that we've brought up Joe. So, when you're (laughs) going to do Hound, right? Yes. Where do you start beginning to end with a design of something like that? Um, Well, first, I'll usually probably set up the artboards. Um, Mm -hmm. All of my clone pen artboards are roughly like an inch and a half by like an inch and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, So with Joe's or with any of them, I'll usually ask them to send a straight on picture of their bucket Mm -hmm. so I can have like their own reference because I know each one is a little bit different. And then Google is kind of useless for reference images for the clones, which is really disappointing. Yeah, so strange. Um, So I'll usually get them to send me a photo um, and then I'll usually do the line art in like a really obnoxious color like bright pink so I can see it over the photo. Sure. And I'll usually draw over like maybe half the photo and then reflect it. Um, Ah. So I make sure everything's perfectly even. Smart. You know, take, you know, add a range finder and kind of if needed. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you just connect everything and then I do a layer under that with the color. Oh, okay. How long? And then when everything's done, I'll merge it together and send it to people. Okay. So how long does the average, say, clone take from like concept um, to completion maybe between an hour and two hours oh wow depending on the design that's very um, fast yeah luckily i've gotten pretty speedy at the clones but like i've i'm working on i think i've got four completed ahsoka ones done and the two that i've been working on most recently uh probably have taken me at least four or five hours each Yee. that's so. double the time Hey, but yes. uh, it's, I mean, quality. It's very, very good. Yeah. There are uh, the two I've been working on. It's like the poses where it's Fulcrum and Snips standing next to each other doing the same pose with the lightsabers in the reverse grip. Ooh, that's cool. Behind her. Yeah. So it'll be like a set of two different pens. Um, but yeah, the detail and just the color shading on those was more difficult than the clones. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I like it. I like it. And so... they have eyes. So you got to make sure that like they're looking in the same direction. Sure. Because you'll be like drawing and then you'll hide a layer and then it looks like they're cross eyed and you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, what's yeah. happened? This is wrong. This is wrong. Yeah, you don't like want to. I made one of the convor, and, uh, which has oh. turned out actually pretty cute. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. I'm, yeah. I might launch that one first for no particular reason at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wink, 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 <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> but um, when I was drawing it at first, the poor little guy just looked horrified. And I was like, I can't get him to stop looking horrified. Like, he's seen something scarring. Yeah. But, like, you just move, like, an eyebrow a couple pixels, and then the mouth corners up a little bit, and then he looks cute now. So he's, sure. he's acceptable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he looks slightly less like a terrified little owl. Yeah. Yeah. That's It's so funny how such a tiny little line just changes everything. Mm-hmm. Expression is nuts. So what's the what's the most difficult one difficult thing that you've worked on so far as far as graphic design goes? Ooh, um, I ask the hard questions. Yes, <laughs> in the professional sense, it's more of just dealing with clients who may not understand exactly what you do. Tell me about that, God. <laughs> or change their minds too much, and then they're pressing their own deadlines too close. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had one project for um, a very large international company, and they were big print displays, and they were rolling off to printer, and they're like, wait, the laptop's another color. And I'm like, 
we've been working on this for like eight months and you couldn't nail down what color it was. Yeah, not anymore, it isn't. Like, <laughs> yeah, it'd be like, they're dark gray. And it's like, no, it's actually gunmetal. Oh. And it's like the difference between that, it's like so, so tiny sure. that no one other than me and the employees would notice the difference. Right. So Yeesh. Customers, man. Customers. <laughs> and I... then some are always afraid to ask for edits. And like another, a good example of like a good client, I guess, would be Joe because mm-hmm. I showed him the first couple of designs and I'm always like, what do you think? If you like it, then I'll send the files to you. If not, please tell me anything you want changed. Sure. And he apologized because he's like, I feel like I'm being a stickler, but it's like, can you move this tooth like a little bit up and like, can you round the antenna just a little bit more? And I'm like, I mean, yeah, it's your pen. It's your, these are going to be created and you're going to hand them out. So sure. I want him to be happy with them. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Gun metal. God. I did, <laughs> I did, uh, I had a videography company for a couple of years and I did weddings and uh, oh, wow. I'm an idiot, so I did like quite a few by myself. Uh, don't oh. <laughs> don't do that. It's a lot of work, and something is always going to go wrong. Pro tip. Yes. Um, I had this one bride, who beforehand we talked about. I was like, "Here's the deal. I'm going to shoot your wedding, and it's going to be very cinematic. I'm going to make like a movie out of your wedding. It's going to look beautiful. It's going to be great. It's going to look like, almost like a commercial for your wedding. And I'll shoot the ceremony, and I'll shoot the reception, and I'll give you the full thing." She's like, "That sounds great. All right, cool." It took me four months to go through all of the footage and to edit it and to put the right song to it and mix it and it just it came out so good and it was like 15 minutes which is Mm -hmm. long that is a long thing to give to someone and when i gave it to her she was like um the reception was three hours why am i only getting 15 back i was like we need to talk (laughs) (laughs) do you want a live stream of it yeah exactly i was like if you wanted like a home video give a camera to your aunt or like a relative. Yeah. I was like, that's not what I do. We talked about this. And man, that was not what she wanted to hear. Ooh. So I uh, so I, I went back. I was like, all right, I'll do the best I can with what I got. I gave her 23 minutes. I was like, that's that's all I got. Because I Who's didn't gonna shoot sit it. sit down with her and watch that? That's what I said. That's what I said. I was like, <laughs> when are you going to be like, let's just watch our wedding again. That's a half an hour. But I was like, <laughs> And then she's like, no, this is great. I'm like, all right, cool. Because that's, that's literally all I have. <laughs> Because you don't, I'm not just filming Every the whole thing. Of footage. Yeah, you know, you're doing like pickups and things here and there and putting it all together. So that would make sense that the most difficult would actually be the client and not a, uh, not the not the piece. That's fair. That's fair. So you said, growing up really really young, you did you did Queen Amidala, you did Shakti, you did Sakura. So costumes were always a big thing. Your dad was into it. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So cosplay comes around. So did you, I'm assuming that that interest stayed with you all the way as a Mm -hmm. kid, which is pretty cool. What was your first costume you put together? Was it Queen Amidala? Uh, That one was a store-bought one. Um, I still remember how the plastic face thing just (laughs) cut into your cheeks. Oh, yes, yes, I've seen that. awful. Um, (laughs) I kind of fell into cosplay in a weird way, too. Seems like all of my hobbies. Um. I had always really enjoyed Halloween and all that. And both of my parents were into it. They'd help me make costumes. Cool. Um, holidays were just big in general. We always compare my dad to Clark Griswold with oh, Christmas sweet. vacation. Like, we go all out. I love it. So every Halloween would go all out. My brother would go all out. Um, and it was approaching Halloween, my freshman year in college. Mm-hmm. And the design school where I went to school always throws a Halloween party. And because they were all design students, all the costumes were, like, insanely cool. Sure. Or just, like, really clever. Um, And, like, even the dean would dress up and come. What? That's awesome. uh, Yeah. Our dean was amazing. Um, My friend actually went as the dean one year, and it was the one year he wasn't able to come. And it was tragic. Well, actually, that kind of makes sense. He looks like Albert Einstein, but, like, always wears a black suit. That's amazing. all black. What? So, and it was a very small... uh, like community um just because the admissions were very tough sure. so i think i was one of 16 people in my major and then wow. there's a couple other majors mm-hmm. so it was gonna be cool it was gonna be like there was a contest and all this other things so i was like you know i'll make something cool to wear to the the, the, the design bash and yeah, then of course i'll go home for the weekend and hand out candy in it maybe so i thought 
not knowing anything about cosplay or anything, that I was going to make a full set of N7 armor from Mass Effect. Yes. And you I was thought. like, it can't be that hard. <laughs> you thought. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I spent like the entire summer almost doing that because, you know, your first costume, you might have lit the first breastplate you made on fire when it was in the oven. Uh, of course. So there was a giant <laughs> hole in the middle of it. Battle damage. So stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so that was all uh, EVA foam, hot glue. Ah, uh, yes. And elastic and prayers. Yeah, of um, course. Of course. Of course. So... The event was drawing closer and closer, and I had two friends that I wanted to go with me and dress up. And one was like, yeah, I'll do it. And so she wanted to be a character called Edie, which is like um, a fully synthetic lady. So mm-hmm. I made her like robot hair, and we got one of those Zentai suits and what? sharpied all of it Yes. to look like a robot. That's awesome. I probably still have slight brain damage from the fumes, but <laughs> it's okay. It was worth it. Worth it. And then another friend of mine wanted to do um, a character from, like, the multiplayer. So it's another heavily armored, like, I think her name was a demolisher. So it had, like, grenades and bandoliers and, um, like, cool cargo pants just stuffed with explosives. Yeah. So I was like, and that was maybe a week before. And I was oh, like, of course. I've been bugging you all summer <laughs> and you commit now. That's I was right. like, fine, Challenge we'll do it. accepted. <laughs> yep. So we did all that and we roll up and... Like, Mass Effect was popular, but, like, not super popular. Sure. So a lot of people who didn't even know who I was, like, thought it was really cool because I had lights in the back and all this stuff. And But the people who did get it, like, geeked out hardcore. Sure. And so the next year, I was like, all right, I got to bring it. And it was 2014, and Winter Soldier had just come out. And Ooh. I was obsessed with that movie. Fair. So I made a Winter Soldier. Sweet. Um, a female Winter Soldier. Um so my arm was made out of craft foam, but I treated it so it looked like metal. Um, it was basically just like a cast. I couldn't move it. Yeah. Um, but I showed up and people were like, this is insane. You have to go to NC Comic Con in like a couple weeks. And I was like, we have a Comic Con. Oh. <laughs> so I went there with a friend and there were so many pictures taken of us. And um, like she won first place in the beginner category and I won second place. Hey. And I didn't even think we'd place because, like, it was all hot glue and, sure. you know, 99-cent craft foam. That's what everyone's is made out of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the secret. That's the secret. <laughs> so from then on, I just um, I joined um, a charity group out in North Carolina that was kind of all genre. Um, I made a couple of things. But then I, was, I graduated college early, and I was left with um, – I actually graduated the same day The Force Awakens came out. Oh, sweet. So I had – the force is strong with me on my graduation cap, and then I like threw it off, Sweet. and I was like, "To the theater, because yeah. we need to go watch this movie." Um, so I remember I was like, "I'm not gonna look for jobs until like January, because no one's gonna be hiring over Christmas anyway." Right. That was my justification for being <laughs> or lazy. So you thought? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, my brother had been telling me forever, you need to watch the show, The Clone Wars, and I was like, eh, eh. I kind of remember when the movie came out. I was like, "What is this?" But it was kind of like. I had a non-Star Wars phase. And mm-hmm. looking back, that makes me really sad. Sure. Um, like, my brother and I, we'd still play Battlefront. We would still play the Lego games for whatever reason. Sure. We were like, we need to complete 100% this Same. really ridiculous game. Relatable. Yep. But, you know, I'd watch the movies on occasion, but it's nothing like now. Um, <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I basically spent the month of December watching the entire series. Yes. And, like, I would just, like, be up in my room all day and just watch, you know, 10, 12 episodes. And I'd come out at night and I'm like, like <laughs> guys, giant my family's eyes. like, what's I've happened? I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I remember there was one night where I made the mistake of watching The Lawless oh, and boy. the season five finale in the same oh. section of hours. Why would you do that to yourself? I didn't know. That's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I came out for dinner and I'm like my eyes are pink and puffy from crying like you can still see like the tear stains on my cheeks and my family's like what are you watching I'm like I'm watching Star Wars yeah exactly and they're like uh okay oh man I'm like you don't understand yeah <laughs> you don't know what I've been through <laughs> I'm like, this is not a kid's show yeah no it is not no <laughs> season three it started it off takes a bit. turn yeah yes yeah. that's what I told people because they're like, you know, I tried it and it wasn't for me. And I'm like, get past season maybe one or two where it's more of a kid show. And then, like, trust me, it, it will get really good. 
full 180 to be like, hey, mm-hmm. we're going to do a Gulliver's Travel episode too. People are getting beheaded. Like stuff yes. goes sideways. <laughs> yeah. And like the whole Umbara arc with the clone troopers, I'm like, God, the f- I know people like in the service and I don't know if they'd be able to watch this. The first time I ever saw that, that was when I was, I knew I was in uh, because that made me so mad. Oh, like, oh, th- trial makes like, me so angry. <laughs> I, same, same. Like Jedi are my thing. And to see this guy, I was like, he calls himself a Jedi? What is this? <laughs> oh, I, like, I took it personal. I was oh, like, yeah. I'm legitimately offended that this guy calls himself a Jedi because he's making the rest of us look bad. Where's Anakin? And, uh, and then, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then it ends up with, oh, just kidding. He's not really. I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Oh, he went to the dark side. We're good. Never been happy about that before. That was the worst. It was the worst. It was, especially coming, like, when I watched it through the first time, I was like, wow, there's a lot of clones, there's a lot of names, but then now I'm super attached to all of them, so when I realized that they were killing off these characters that, like, you know, Waxer and Boyle, oh, and yeah. Fives, Fives, mm. I'm still not over. 99. 99. 99 oh, gets me. Yeah. That was ugly crying. Yeah. That was, yeah, that that was, was... some ugly crying, because yeah. I saw it coming, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're That's... gonna kill him. <laughs> Those mm. monsters are gonna kill them. Yeah, that one's ninety nine. Ninety too much for me. That one, that one got me. So you want? So you hadn't seen the Clone Wars series before, like December of twenty fifteen. Yeah, that's amazing. I so, was a late bloomer. So then, this will be an interesting question for you specifically. What did you think of Ahsoka at the beginning? <laughs> I think it's the same answer that everyone has. And when she was introduced, I was kind of like those. Those fans were always grumpy where it's like, a real original trilogy or nothing. Oh, and I was like, that. so, <laughs> I'm like, who's this new girl? Like, we know Anakin, we know Obi-Wan, we know all these people. But it's like, who is she? And, like, there's going to, like, try to slide her in here and just make her work with everything. Sure. I'm like, and she's not in episode three. So what's going on? That's and same. then she's young, she's bratty. I like that she kind of sassed Anakin, but it was, like, a little <laughs> too much sometimes. Yes. And I'm like, because Anakin starts off pretty goody two shoes and, you know, he and all does. things. He does. And then he gets darker and darker and darker. And that's yeah. why I love it. It's like watching Clone Wars has made episode three so much better. It was still oh, yeah. my my favorite, Same. I think. Same. It's my favorite. Just because growing up, you know, I was in fifth grade when I watched it the first time, like Order 66, watching that in theater. That's when my childhood ended. <laughs> Just, it makes me cry <laughs> to this day. I still oh, cry yeah. every time. Listening that... just to the music. Oh, yeah. Me. I'd, and and after watching Clone Wars Order sixty six and you know Plo Koon and you know Kiati Mooney and you oh know, yeah and you're like oh I care it's too much yeah exactly <laughs> me I was just saying like, it I, I care see. it's the worst the worst or like Ayla like I had grown up loving her design and like the Twilight she was so cool she was blue in mm. Battlefront two she had two lightsabers yeah. and I would spam the heck out of the throw option oh, yeah. and to see her just shot in the back so and then shot times. a lot yeah. I was like, oh, okay. uh, she's she's not okay. No, she's she's gone. She's, she's gone. gone. Makes me makes me real sad. Makes me real sad. Oh, and then Kyari Mundi's face when he turns around and realizes I, that they're not following. I was like, oh, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. That My moment. Heart. That I think that moment. Talking about that moment is why me and Savannah are best friends. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> I've heard about this. She knows. And uh, no, I just can't handle it. The moment of realization of like. Huh, just sure terror. I was like, Ooh, yeah. no, I can't. He was and winning. He tries his best yeah, to, he does. To, hold him, to hold off. But uh, yeah, it's I like, can't. even though he was kind of a jerk to Ahsoka, yeah. I was still like, you know what? You you t- you deserved better. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like his episode. I think it was the uh, Point Rain. I think it's called whatever the one yeah. is. where Keati Moody's episode where he's like, what are you guys doing? Oh, you're playing a game. That's weird. And at the end, he's like, like yeah. I got the highest. Yeah, I was just watching that the other day. He's like, yeah, my account was like 65. What do I win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I like so it. disappointed when Anakin's like my like undying respect. He's like, oh. Oh, that's lame. Yeah. Lame. <laughs> I didn't need that. So, <laughs> uh, so at what point did Ahsoka turn around for you? Um, It must have been at some point in probably mid to late season three. Definitely mm-hmm. that maturity level and that costume and just like, some of the arcs that go on after that point, like the Slavers arc. Oh, yeah. And Lewis, obviously, are two of my favorites, and that's why I do those kind of strange versions of Ahsoka. Um, and I, was just, I remember watching it, and I was like, oh, no. I'm going to have to <laughs> cosplay her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I'll, moment. <laughs> yeah. I only uh, cosplay people that I've 
like feel connected to at some levels or a lot of levels. Same. And there was just a point where I was like, this is starting to sound way too familiar to my life and what I'm going through. Sure. And Savannah knows even to this day, it's still like writing itself out. And I'm just like, you know, I like Ahsoka, but I don't want to go through some of the same stuff she had to go through, please. Oh, for real. So, God. So we it... joke that right now I'm in my uh, my novel stage. So I've, yeah. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah, it's like all this bad stuff has happened. I'm in a place kind of like on my own. I've never been here just trying to get through each day and like meet new people and sure. try to decide what I want to be doing. Sure. And so. Looking yeah. for your crystal so, in the enemy's lightsaber. You know, yes, if, I, if, if I see an Inquisitor, then yeah. it's going down. Handle your sabers. business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that so that's what uh, got you to decide to cosplay Ahsoka, which is amazing, by the way. Your Ahsoka is phenomenal, like all of them. <laughs> Thank Am- you. Amazing. <laughs> um, so it was the connection with the character. You're like, yeah, I got to do this. I, feel, mm-hmm. I, I, I work the same way where I was like, mm, yep have to now it's just that that (laughs) yes absolutely so do you have a qui-gon i do i have i actually (laughs) have i have qui-gons from the movie and i have qui-gons from uh a comic when he was younger Nice. he has like beige and then brown tabards and i I have that approved uh in the rebel legion and all that stuff and now i'm like what else do i need and i (laughs) all the qui-gons i just finished um some clone gauntlets to make a jedi general and I was like, Ooh. you know what I should do? I should get my Qui Gon and like get that approved. But I was like, wait, Qui Gon would never have been a Clone Wars general. He would have just left. So no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, nah, man. Yeah, inaccurate. I'm out. No way. Qui Gon would <laughs> never have gone with him. He's like, guys, this isn't who we are. Trust me, I'm like a resident Qui Gon expert. So, <laughs> uh, so, what is your favorite version of Ahsoka? Ooh, um, just like general day to day, I'd probably have to say just the Clone Wars season three through five, mm-hmm. um, just because that's when I feel like we got to know her the best. Sure, and, she got um, another lightsaber. It's kind of cool. Yeah, got another lightsaber. Um, her no, sass no levels will still peak. Yeah, no tube top. <laughs> um, that's a lot of body paint. That's the, I I don't know if I'll ever do that version. Yeah, fair. Fair. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's a lot, man. That's a yeah. lot. <laughs> It, it's actually uh, uh, side note what kind of body paint do you use because that's something you got to worry about is like oh, yeah. putting orange everywhere and then by the yes. end you're just smeared and you're like oh i have a regular hand now yeah it's like oh i've sweated all off at a con yeah whoops um yeah especially uh i wore ahsoka the slave version to dragon con yes. which is in september in atlanta which it's still hot and humid if anyone has not been there and then sure. there's like 120,000 of your closest friends. Also, there are probably more than that, honestly, now. There's a lot. They take over the city, basically. I've never even been, but I've heard stories. It's Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> There's lots of stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Some but, illegal. <laughs> oh, uh, probably most, yeah. actually. I was good. I went to bed. I was like, nah, guys, I'm tapping out. Ahsoka gets cranky. That's right. She does not get to sleep. <laughs> and you woke um, up in a park. <laughs> yeah. luckily that did not happen yeah for real it probably happened to somebody but it was not me definitely happened to somebody <laughs> <laughs> so, but um i use usually um alcohol-based paint okay. um which means it's waterproof it's sweat proof um yeah, i apply it with an airbrush oh, and okay. i like it because it's more expensive mm-hmm. and it's I don't, it's not more of a pain to put on because I've sponged on water-based paint before and it's just like, ugh. sure, it's, it's harder to blend. You know, if you touch anything, you know, even if you seal it, you're going to get worn somewhere sure, or on someone. Mm-hmm. So um, I use a brand called Temptu Dura, which is kind of like in the middle of price range. Mm-hmm. Um, I happen to find a color that had that good, like rusty orange color of Seasons three through five because her skin tone changes. Yes, twice. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> because rebels is a different color. Yeah, I learned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I do that. It used to take me about three hours uh, to do it, mm-hmm. but I went and bought a gun that's usually I think you're supposed to spray like, not quite the siding of your house, but something <laughs> much larger than a person. Sure. And so now it takes me about maybe an hour and a half, and that's like. Full orange, ceiling, wow. contouring, and then the beauty makeup on top of that. Um, that is, so it's like a legit movie production time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Good on so. you for that. That's that's some work. I thought, yeah, it's it's geez. crazy. That's I mean, it shows though. That's the thing. You're not cutting corners, you know, and your Ahsoka looks so good because you put in the work beforehand. I thought I had a bad taking like 15, 20 minutes to get into my clone. And uh, oh, yeah, no. yeah, no, wow, I was, I was unprepared for that number. I've I've been put into a clone a clone kit before. It was my friend, so it didn't fit, but uh -huh. it was it was an experience. It kind of reminded me of getting in my goalie gear. Yeah. Where if you put something on wrong, then you're never gonna get into the other part. You got to start it's over. Like specific order, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Range of motion is not great. No. Um, Sitting's impossible. Forget about sitting it. Sitting is impossible. Mm hmm But, yeah, it wasn't too bad. And then, you know, they have complained about getting ready. And I'm like, guys, three hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, and I can't do here... it all by myself. <laughs> I've been here since seven. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the mortise paint takes even longer. Oh, yeah. Man, so, so. that's – I am amazed by the mortise Ahsoka. Like, I'm amazed by all of it because all your stuff is really good. But the Mortis one, there's so much detail that you fit into <laughs> that. It's a, it's incredible. It's incredible. Because, I, I mean, that's the best thing about costuming in general is seeing something on screen and then seeing it in person. And mm -hmm. you are the Mortis Ahsoka. And you're like, <laughs> oh, no. This is bonkers. And you got the knife. Amazing. Is it? So, yeah. what, so what was your first version of Ahsoka? My first version, um, there's pictures out there. Yeah. It's really bad. I posted something the other day where it's like all the versions I have so far. Yeah. The headpiece was probably several pounds. It didn't move. I was walking mm. around like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> You're the, just the really tired, Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah. The, the colors are wrong just because I couldn't find the right fabrics. Um, mm. I was too scared to even use leather, let alone faux leather. Um I used orange water-based paint, so it got everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so it was an experience. Sure. <laughs> Looking back at those photos, I'm like, oh, and I thought I looked really cool. Sure. Hey, <laughs> it counts, right? My first yeah. Jedi, I had like cowboy boots, and I was like, these count, right? I think. Nice. Maybe. They don't. They don't count. They look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, so how many versions of Ahsoka do you have now? I have um, Clone Wars, mm -hmm. just the regular one. I guess if Mortis counts as one. I have um, the Slaves of the Republic version, yep. and I have a Fulcrum, um, which needs some pretty extensive repairs and upgrades because I made that in under two weeks. Wow. Because um, I was stubborn, and I was like, if I'm going to troop Rogue One premiere with the Rebel Legion, I want to be more time appropriate. Fair. I'm like, I can't show up as Clone Wars Ahsoka. What are you talking about? That doesn't even like, make sense. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. So, and like, I was in the theater scanning the background of every crowd scene on the bases looking for Ahsoka. I'm like, give me a, a glimpse, oh. like orange, shadow, something. She's got to be there. I So, when I first saw Rogue One, I had just finished the Ahsoka book because it had come <laughs> out like a month or two prior. And, um, you know, when you first see a Star Wars movie, if you're a fan, like you are, and like I am, you're analyzing every single thing on the screen and everything that's being said. So the first time, mm -hmm. you're just like, what is that? What is going on? And then the second time, you can actually watch the movie. Yeah. And uh, my brain was on overload because I adore Rogue One. I saw it 23 times in theaters. I loved, Whoa. I loved Rogue One. I had the ultimate ticket, so it wasn't like I spent a ton of money. Nice. Um, but... So when it gets to the scene where Bail and Mon Mothma have that exchange, where she's uh, like, you know, we're going to need all the help we can get, like, your Jedi friend, right? I was like, and it's okay. It, uh, Please. So, okay, so I thought that. I was like, no. And then <laughs> as she leaves. Because of the novel. It, yes, because I'd just come out, and the novel, Bail and Ahsoka knew each other. So prior, like, Bail knows. And then as Mon Mothma's leaving, uh, she says, you know, you'll need to send someone you can trust. And he says, I would trust her with my life. And my brain put that her with the your friend the Jedi together. And I was like, <gasps> and I was like hitting the people next to me. I was like, it's Ahsoka. And then I watched it the <laughs> second time. I was like, oh. Oh, it's Kenobi and Leia. <laughs> I was wrong. I got some splaining to do. Huh. This is Yeah, I got super excited. Because I made a scene. Like popcorn <laughs> went. I was like hitting people. I was like, you don't understand. That means Ahsoka. And uh, no, it doesn't. 
It does not. So Sadly, I, no. I'm with you. The whole time I was like, Ahsoka, I read the book. She's she's here. She's here somewhere. My headcanon is, though, that the reason why Vader is in the back to tank so much is because of Ooh. his fight with Ahsoka. Ooh. Because she messed him up. She did. She and did. That, timeline-wise, was before Rogue One. We don't know how I close. Mean... Ooh, I'm into it. So that's uh, that's what I'm telling myself. I know. I mean, gosh, God. It's so much in the air. And this new season coming out going to be nuts. Oh, I'm Do- so nervous. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, so what is your favorite version of Ahsoka to wear? Um, I'd say the reactions that I get out of the Mortis one, even though I've only worn it once, have, have really? been so... Mm-hmm, just two days at Celebration. I'm going to try to wear it oh. soon. I have cool. a photo shoot coming up where we're doing kind of like, I wish we had a Lux Bonteri because we're going up to the Ooh. snow. We're going to do like Ahsoka and Lux with the winter coats and everything versus Death Watch. Amazing. So I want to get that shot of her beheading four Mandalorians. Yes. Her, I don't know how I'm going to ask them to do that yet. But... Her best moment. I yes. mean, they're, they're Death Watch. Their heads have to come off. It's like part of the CRO. Yeah. But, yeah, of course. We'll be like, hey, um. Just take your helmet off and then just like hide your head for yeah, the shot. Yeah, exactly. Just, just fine. fall backwards, please. We'll fix yeah. it in post. So, yeah. but after I, after I do that, there I think WonderCon is the next big con out cool. here. I'm still learning my way around the cons out here. Sure. Um, and I feel like that would be a fun one to bring Mortis back to because I yeah. have to repeat the same headpiece every time. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm, I'm hoping to make a mold so I can crank out headpieces for myself and other people. Oh, cool. Um. But I'm moving again in March, just locally, so yeah, I can't yeah. really set up a big station. Um, Fair. And my roommate would be like, "What are you doing now?" Exactly. Luckily, she's she's five oh first too, so she understands. But it's cool. like, I'm a little bit more of a pain in the butt to deal with than like a scout, which is what right, she yeah. has. You mean clothes with some armor on it? <laughs> Scouts, the most Tree comfortable. Huggers. Yeah, lucky. <laughs> oh, Savannah just gave me a look like, oh, "How dare you?" She knows. But you have a shadow scout. That's really cool. Yeah, she knows. She knows she's cheating. That's not armor. <laughs> he says she or she knows she's cheating, and that's not armor. <laughs> that's right. There's just laughter coming from across the room. Yes. So it, is the headdress heavy? Because that's a question I've always wondered. Um, this new version isn't that bad. Um, cool. I've never actually weighed it. It's expanding foam and latex, so a lot of it is very lightweight. Um, I wore it for almost four days straight at Celebration. Wow. And, like, I think the only thing after was my neck and shoulders were a little bit sore. Mm-hmm. Um, just from being on my feet for four solid days. Sure. But um, it's not that bad. Like, I can we do a troop and not have any problems. The only problem is I, if I try to use, like, a bobby pin to put my hair up. Yeah, yeah. And it sits on it the wrong way. It's, like, driving that You're into my head. your head. Yeah, so I Yeesh. usually just throw those out. And I'm like, no, it's fine. Sure. Don't need it. Oh, God. Well, at- I'll have to weigh it and see how much it is, though. More than a pound. Whatever it is, well done. Thank uh, you. So, Ahsoka Lives Day at Celebration. Yes. You uh, you met you met some people. I met some people. You got you got a, you got a picture with some people. Uh, I got yeah. One wearing a cowboy hat, and uh, <laughs> the other one is you. So let's yeah. let's talk. Let's talk. You met yeah, uh, that... you met Dave Filoni and Ashley Eckstein. Yes, which is. What? hilarious that that's how that happened because i had been i basically flew solo the entire celebration i had gone down with her with some friends but the lines and the schedules were just so crazy and that was my first celebration wow so i went into it with i i w- listened to uh your our savannah's podcast talking about it with like the spreadsheets oh and yes the schedules where panels were going to be back to back and that was going to be no problem yeah like, i didn't make it to <laughs> one panel this time it's so a, it's i just kind of wandered and then i got lucky I got lucky a lot where I was noticed or asked to come on stage or whatever. Yeah. And so when I was wandering around, um, actually the first day, I think this is what kickstarted it all, is some of my Carolina clones back home. Shout out to Carolina Clone Corps. Mm-hmm. Miss you guys. Yeah. Um, they had invited me to invade Filoni's panel on the Thursday. Yes. So they're like, yeah, we usually do it every year, and we, like, give them gifts, and it's all clones. But they're like, but since you have an Ahsoka now, like, would you want to lead us in? And I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. D- uh, duh. Duh. So that was cool. Um, But I was so nervous, and I was trying to stay in character while we were up there in front of them, that 
like Filoni was specifically talking about like Ahsoka's costume and how like he admires people who try it, but I'm standing there like at full attention with the clones and he's like gesturing to me and talking to me, but he's behind me. So I had no idea because I can't hear that well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I went back and watched the live stream and I was like, he was talking about me and I didn't even turn around. <laughs> ah! So that was normal Ahsoka. So I did that for two days mm-hmm. and I had all these friends that were just wandering around and they would bump into him and they would bump into Ashley and they would be like, have you met my friend McKenna? She has a really good Ahsoka and you need to see her. And so, like, they knew that I was looking for them, I guess. Yeah. But um, I had never seen them. I saw cosplayers of Dave Filoni. Oh, yes. Lots of them. Yeah, of course. I was so excited. But no, it was never, never him. So it was the day of the contest, um, which was a crazy day. Mm-hmm. Um, I had gone to Galactic Nights the night before. Oh, right on. Which was fun. Um, one of the best compliments of my life, I think, is being stopped at the Disney gates and saying, okay, here's the deal. You look like you could work here. Um, you cannot what? sign autographs. You cannot take pictures. Like <laughs> You cannot act like you work here as our character performer. And I was like, you think it's that nice? <laughs> Listen here, Ahsoka. You're not <laughs> yeah. our Ahsoka. And you yeah. can't pretend to be our Ahsoka. And then they were like, but can I take a selfie with you? <laughs> <laughs> and then imagine you're like, you're like, like it's a trick no. question. Yeah, exactly. No. And they go, well done. Well done. Yeah. This way. <laughs> so that was fun. So, but we were up so late, and then we got back to the hotel probably maybe one or two in the morning. And then I had entered in the Mortis Ahsoka for the costume contest. Smart. And so I had to do all the vein work that night because mm. I was orange for four days straight. <laughs> Perfect. Because it's waterproof, so I could do like you know little showers and stuff when I needed, but just do touch ups. Yeah, of course. So we were up till four o'clock in the morning. And my roommate is the one who helped me paint. And it was great because she was actually falling asleep while she was painting me. So that's where the really nice shaky lines came from. <laughs> so credit goes to her completely. You look on your arm, it's her face print for when she just fell asleep yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah. So that was interesting. Um, and then, so that day was just a complete blur. The Saturday was crazy because we had prejudging in the morning. And I was still wandering around looking for, especially when I was in Mortis. I'm like, I really want... Ashley and Dave to see this because I don't think they've ever seen it before. Yeah, sure. Um, and I'm like, I know that Ashley loves those those episodes. And, you know, I assume Dave does because he, like, made them. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so I was, you know, doing the prejudging, running back and forth, and then I was with another friend of mine who is Jedi Amanda, who also does a really good... Oh, yeah. Um, She's amazing. Um, she was, like, the first fulcrum out there. And I was like, oh, man, I'll never get to her level. So she had her amazing Amidala in the costume contest oh too. So that's when God. we met. And I you know I was helping her get ready. And then we both, we both knew about the Ahsoka Liz day mm-hmm. and we're like, Oh, we might miss it because of this contest stuff. And we had one free hour and that was the same hour as the photo shoot. Really? So we like dropped everything and ran. And then of course we're constantly being asked to stop for pictures because it's like her gorgeous Amidala who looks yeah. like it walked off the set for real. And then just look creepy. <laughs> and I'm orange, so it's like I'm not really subtle. Um, so we took a few, but then we we're like, we have to go to this thing. You guys don't understand. Like it's Ahsoka, and so we got there, and everyone was kind of just like standing around. Like I wasn't sure who was leading it. I knew that there was like a couple people who had helped organize it, but mm-hmm. I was standing up on the stage, and I kind of like raised the dagger up, and I'm like, okay, uh, let's just like <laughs> get this going. I was like, let's just arrange ourselves from like young kids up in the front, and then we'll do like. You know, tube top Ahsoka, then uh, you know, Clone Wars, and then novel, and then full crumbs because the headpieces like everyone yeah. would go back in the middle, and then casual fans wearing like the merchandise and stuff like go up on the sides. Mm-hmm. So we had started arranging all that, and then um, I don't remember if Ek Johnson arrived first or if it was Ashley, but she came down the escalator, and everyone freaked out, and she was, I think she was crying. Um, <laughs> typical. Typical. Um, so. She was there, and then Dave eventually showed up. But oh, I keep there's so many crazy just yeah, coincidences of course. that happened because I had met a cameraman on I think the very first day where he took that shot of me that's in the closing video with all the clones. Yes, looks like the split second. Um, he had asked me to do um, an interview, which is the little sound bite that I have in that video. Mm-hmm. Um, so like we had exchanged numbers to find me because I was going into a panel. 
And so he was at the costume contest, took the shot of me backstage, which is also in that video of the really close up of my face. Yeah. I was like, you, sir, are like my best friend. Like, <laughs> you are making this like an amazing experience. Yeah. And he's like, have you met Dave? He's going to flip over this. And I was like, no, that's what everyone keeps saying. And I oh keep God. missing him. Oh my God. So he was the one at the Ahsoka shoot that took that like sweeping shot of everybody up the stairs when we say Ahsoka lives. Yeah. So Dave showed up. His name was Sean, so shout out to Sean at Lucasfilm. He yeah. was like, hey, Dave, you like tap on the shoulder. He's like, shake that Ahsoka's hand. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, because before he was able to catch up to him, Ashley had, she had seen me at like a distance, and we had been missing each other all weekend. And mm-hmm. she's like, we're going to get a picture. It'll be fine. We're going to do it. Sure. And so she like, tap Dave on the shoulder and she was like hey look look and she points up and I have a video clip of this someone sent it to me and I was like thank you it's what? like the proudest moment where he saw my mortis and he's like he just says wow like that is awesome and like geeks out for a minute What? and then and then you know Sean's like shake her hand and blah 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 so then like hurry up and get in the picture so yeah he just walks right up and stands next to me and I'm just like what uh, <laughs> and he like does the side hug and I'm just like uh <laughs> You, what is happening? You become like the Mortis Ahsoka that's just crying. <laughs> oh, and that was also right after the Rebels panel where yeah. he had done his t-shirt switch. Oh, yes. The one and he denied. been in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He denied it hardcore. Because, of course, I showed up to the Ahsoka shoot like, guys, guess what I just saw? Yeah, right. I've seen things. <laughs> and then he showed up with a question mark and they're like, I thought you said it was an exclamation point. I'm like, I, it was. I swear it was. <laughs> that's that. That's his plan. <laughs> yep. So while we were all sitting there doing all the pictures, there's a couple pictures where it looks like I'm threatening or yelling at him, <laughs> which is great because it's like I've got the evil makeup on and I have the dagger like pointed at him. And <laughs> Listen here, I know what I saw. <laughs> yeah. It was basically, it was like, oh, let's say Ahsoka lives. And then we all said it. And he's like, maybe, probably, we'll see. I don't know. And then we're all like groaning and all that. And I was like, I saw the T-shirt, and I like kind of gestured at his T-shirt with the dagger. Yeah. That's when someone snapped the picture, so I'm like, yeah, right. like <laughs> calling him out. And E.K. Johnson is laughing hysterically next to us, um, and he's like, Oh, why did I stand next to the scary one? Right. <laughs> so I was like, Okay. That is amazing. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. I that mean... and I bumped into Pablo Hidalgo on Thursday. No, Wednesday evening. Going in to get our badges for some friends. Oh my god! And I had like the I had the Her Universe Ahsoka like costume hoodie on and like the costume necklace. Yeah. So, like I can't get in the costume yet. I want to show my pride. And so he just comes walking along, and I'm like, oh, I want to ask for a picture, but I'm too nervous. But I was like, I finally was like, okay, can I bother you for a picture? And he's like, yeah, sure, anything for an Ahsoka fan. And so hey. I wish I could have seen him in costume. Sure. Super nice. And then I waiting in line on Thursday morning, I saw John Knoll. Oh, he walked by me. Yeah, and it looked like he was like in a hurry because he looked kind of annoyed. I don't know if it was off the line or what. Sure. And I was like, that was John <laughs> Knoll. Because like, when I was little, I used to watch all the special features on all these things. And I'm like, but for some reason, it never clicked that that was a career for these people. Like, sure. that's what they do on a daily basis. So I wish I kind of knew and took a different maybe creative route. But I feel like I'm kind of finding my way doing that now. Sure. You know, like... I got to go to Lucasfilm last summer for a tour, and I was what? just, like, trying not to cry the whole time. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. That was also dumb luck. I have been very, very lucky. Um, my first job out of college was in Raleigh, really mm-hmm. small firm. It was in a big office building, and I was in an elevator one morning, and this really nice older gentleman who just, like, is the type to talk to anyone when you're, like, stuck in an elevator with them. Yeah, yeah. And I think I was carrying some lightsabers with me because I did uh, some dueling after work with a group. Sweet. And he started asking me about it. He like looked up my portfolio website. He was super impressed by my work. And he's like, you know, my son works for Lucasfilm what? out there. And I was like, what? What? Yeah, exactly. And he's like, um, you know, just let me know if I can give him your contact info and just like see what happens. Like I'll send him your portfolio and all this stuff. And then it turned into my friend was interning with Disney, and I came out here over the summer to visit her and also troop with the Southern California Garrison. Yeah, and I had the same look on my <laughs> face. So I was like, hey, friendly uh, office buddy who works across the hall in a different company. I'm like, I'm going to be in California coming up. 
and I could take a weekend trip to San Francisco if I needed to. And he's like, okay, like I'll set something up. I'll get you guys cleared to go and all this stuff. So it was like the day of, um, I was here with two friends. Unfortunately, one got food poisoning. Oh, no. And the other was a pre-med student at UNC. So she's like, I got this. This is what I've trained for. So she stayed and played nurse. And they were like, go, please go, because this is like your dream. They're like, you know, we're... We're nerds, but, like, you know, we're more nerds about other things. Like, don't sure. worry, just go. So they let me go, and it, I felt really bad. But it was kind of nice just because I was able to talk about the industry more sure. um, with them. And so one's an engineer, and one's, like I said, going to be a doctor. So, like, if I was sitting there talking about motion cap, mocap and sure. the um, lab and all the stuff, they'd be like, what is she talking about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we did a little wow. tour. I actually texted the videographer that I met at Celebration. I was like, hey, guess where I'm at? Like, your office. So he came down and chatted with me in the the lobby for a little bit. Um, But we did a little tour. A lot of the place was shut down because they were, I believe, probably working on maybe finishing up Rebels and definitely Last Jedi stuff. He's like, there's some floors that I'm not even allowed to go on. Wow. Okay. Turns out my contact there had actually met Dave Filoni years before, too. Yeah. So what? I was like, this is just the force works in mysterious yeah. way. My God. So from a random elevator encounter, you got a private tour of Lucasfilm. Yes. You know <laughs> I got to have lunch there. That is amazing. Was... Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love stuff like that. And th- people, people, every person that I've talked to on this show just has the craziest stories. <laughs> and like, I'm the lucky one that gets to talk to all of you people. That is incredible. <laughs> It was very like wow, I couldn't believe it, and I love it. Like I got back and I was like, "That's amazing!" And then it turned out that the company that I was working for when I got back from California actually shut its doors like three days later. Wow! So just in time. Yeah. Wow. That's what led to me looking for jobs elsewhere, and because I had grown close to some of the members of Southern California Garrison and um, you know Sunrider Base, mm-hmm. they were like, "Just look out here, just for like giggles," because my one friend is hell-bent on working for Disney. She's like, I'll be out there. Um, it's a nice area. It's something different. And I had real no ties holding me to North Carolina. Sure. Um, and I was like, you know what? I've lived here my entire life. Maybe I'll do something crazy. Mm-hmm. So that's how I ended up out here. Wow. So it's that's been amazing. a crazy almost year. Because Celebration literally changed my life. Like, I'll tell people that. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm like, no, but actually, I moved 3,000 miles because I was at Celebration. That is bonkers. Because that's how people found me. Yeah, no. Wow. I got really lucky. I was on camera and put in the ending video, and I was just like, oh. I mean, luck, yes. But luck is preparation meets opportunity. And there's the whole thing where, like, you met fate, as it were, halfway. (laughs) Because the reason you got noticed so much at Celebration was because of the hard work that you put into your Ahsoka. You know, so you kind of already laid the groundwork for your own <laughs> success. Wow. I'm glad people liked it as much as they did. Because I was like, you know, Clone Wars has kind of had its time. It's sure. I'm late to the game. But I was like, maybe the Mortis one people will like because they haven't seen it. But even when I was just running around as normal Ahsoka, like I had Anakin's running up to me, Vader's. Yeah. Um, I had a, uh, I was shoot, Starkiller. And we took a bunch of pictures because we were fighting to see who was the best apprentice of, of Vader. Of course. <laughs> So that was fun. Luckily, Star Wars is one of those things where uh, even 40 years later, people are still into it. Go figure. Yes. So, yeah, well can't done. Imagine that. <laughs> so, wow. And even, you know, I met Hayden Christensen. I bought a photo op with him. Yes. I've so seen I'm the like, picture. this needs to happen. Yes. Um, Anakin and Ahsoka. So right? I don't know if he knew who I was. I think he knew because of his reaction. Yeah. Um, Tell he, me like, about it. What happened? Was, he, like, I turned the corner and, like, I'm orange and I've got a noodle on my head. So yeah. it's like... <laughs> People react. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if he was just impressed by the whole get up or if he knew who I was because mm-hmm. I knew he wanted to be involved with the show. Um, right. So I didn't know how much he knew of Ahsoka and their whole story. Mm-hmm. But like he turned and was like, wow. And like he apparently smiled much bigger in my photo than he did in other people's photos from hey. what I hear. And like what was nice is I've met so many like either professional hockey players in the past where they do like that hover hand. Oh, yeah. Like they just do not want to be there to touch you or anything. Oh, yeah. Like, he actually gave me a full like hug 
and uh, oh, like he so thought it was cool. awesome. And I was like, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, no, I did the same thing. I was like, <laughs> he was the only one I bought you. tickets for. Thank you for coming. Like, I want you to know you're loved. Yes. Because the hate is so small. It's so oh, small yeah. in in the grand scheme of things. Like, yeah. That, His performance in episode three is amazing. It is incredible. Him Some of the is, dialogue's not good, but like that's not his fault. I'm into it. He's a monk. What else are you thinking? In context, it makes sense. I'll yeah. justify all of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm that guy. No, uh, like the last half where he's just like blinded by rage and oh, sadness. Man. Like, dude, dude, that's how you act. You're crazy. And like right? he's laying in the lava and he's got like all the veins coming out of his neck. I was oh, like, yeah. how do you do that? To, uh, like he's faking right? it. How do you do and, that? I think Ewan McGregor was robbed of an Oscar for that, that whole oh, well. You Are My Brother scene. I cry every time. Still, I've seen it at, hundreds at of times, and it gets me. Did you see the Obi-Wan that was up on one of the levels, not in the main concourse, but like outside in the hallways? No. Who was up on one of the levels, who was screaming that entire speech? Oh, man. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Ooh, why would you <laughs> do he, this? <laughs> he looked and sounded a lot like him, and it was amazing. Oh, I, I saw that, but I missed... Um, I missed the Rebel Fleet Troopers and the Vader recreating the end of Rogue One That's, on the uh, ground floor. Those are Everglades squad. They're my guys. That was you guys? That oh. was South Florida. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's it, amazing. Yeah. That went viral online. Oh, I yeah. I mean, it was everywhere. We were like, my God. Because <laughs> I kept seeing it, and then someone would take it, and they would add sound effects. And yep. then someone would take it and add music. And then someone would add the blasters. And I was like, it was just, saw, it's better and better. Some people actually took the audio from the scene in Rogue One <laughs> and put it in put a, it over. Oh, it was gold. It was gold. amazing. I was like, where was I when this was happening? Right, yeah. Like, I know I was there, but where was I? I was probably in line. I spent a lot of yeah. time in line. Honestly, Worth it. I was in line for Hayden when the trailer dropped. Oh, were you? Mm-hmm. Worth it. Hayden. Yeah. Man. I mean, I could tell because the building shook. Yeah. I, I was I was the same. I was um, it was it I was in line for, I think it was Riz Ahmed, actually. Ah, oh, yeah. To get his autograph. And I was like, I think, I think that's a trailer. I think, <laughs> hmm. That Star Wars like sounds that I wrong. don't know. Yeah. 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 And, and people are freaking out. I'm like, yeah, don't look at it. Stage. Yeah. Like so many people online were trying to stream it, but they were so bogged down because everyone was trying to stream it. Yep. And I was like, I'll just watch it at the hotel room. Like, yeah, I can't right. handle this right now. Oh yeah. Same, 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 same. So you, you move, you move across country, thousands of miles. And, uh, somehow you end up at a, at a little, um, little tea party. <laughs> a little, little, little bit of a tea party. Um, yeah. With, uh, with, you know, somebody kind of cool, I guess, if you're into that yeah. sort of thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> you uh, you had a tea party with Ashley Eckstein. Yes, with still Ahsoka, trying to process that that Ahsoka happened. You're, you're the Ahsoka of the, of the real world, of, <laughs> of the one that we've seen of Celebration. Then you had tea with the actual Ahsoka. How, yes. How did that come to be? How was it? How did you remain so calm looking? Oh, I was not calm. Yeah. yeah Savannah. <laughs> I was like shaking. Good. Um, we, I had met um, a bunch of clones out here and just through talking, like they were super impressed with my Ahsoka. I had done a photo shoot with them and we were in contact. And then um, Savannah met one of them. And I guess through just talking, Savannah was like, I need to get her on the Tea Party Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. And I guess Ashley had remembered me because of the whole Mortis thing. Right. And we didn't get to talk too much because I was actually snuck into the store on Sunday by the cupcake ladies. Oh, sweet. Bless those cupcake ladies those because cupcake they were like, ladies. <laughs> have you met Ashley yet? And I was like, no, because I was kind of like lurking by the store. Yeah. Because I heard that she was in here. And they're like, like they looked side to side and then they like motioned me in through the side. Yeah. I was like, they're like, you need to meet her. And so I get there, and of course, they were about to take her away to go somewhere else. And I was like, okay, of course, like I'm going to miss her again. Yeah. So we did a group shot, but then as she was going away, she's like, wait, no, I need a picture with this Ahsoka. She's my favorite. What? <laughs> and I love, there's a picture that my friend took of that conversation happening, and Savannah's in the background, <laughs> like, <laughs> looking at her watch, like, Ashley, we have to go. Of course. That was her in every picture at Celebration. <laughs> oh, Yes. <laughs> But I love that she will do that um, and talk to people. I know it's probably incredibly frustrating for her management. But... Oh, oh, for sure. For sure. But it's very sweet. Um, so I guess she had remembered me and Savannah had seen me. And um, I think I'd followed her on Instagram by that point. Mm-hmm. So um, 
one of the clones texted me and they're like, when are you coming out here in October again? And I was like, um, you know, so-and-so dates for a troop again, just to visit them. Uh-huh. And he was like, uh, Ashley wants to have you on her tea party Tuesday. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm like, how, wait, who, what, what? And so <laughs> you just throw up. I'm gonna call you back. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to call you back. Um, so yeah, we just exchanged emails and scheduled it. And next thing I knew I had flown out here and I, uh, was sitting in hot topic and at this tea party and it was all very surreal and I'm still kind of like thinking back. I was like, no, it, that happened. Yeah. Like, I'll go back and see the texts about like what kind of cookies we're going to buy and all this because I have some food allergies. So oh, yeah. they're like, wait, <laughs> the cookies aren't going to kill Ahsoka, are they? Yeah, right. Can you imagine? Ahsoka lives? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Until the cookies. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool. It was a good time. Yeah, how, how was it? How was it? You're there? and uh... Yeah. It was, I was so nervous because I was just like, you know, she is Ahsoka and it's yeah. like... <laughs> I know she's a fangirl, but, like, I'm also a fangirl, and, like, I want to be professional, but I don't know if I can hold it together, because it's, like, you're sitting in the middle of, like, the Hot Topic space, and there's cool stuff everywhere. Oh, yeah. The office itself is just super cool. There's just nerds everywhere, and then, it, like, she turns the corner and just, like, out of nowhere, just McKenna, and, like, hugs me, and I was like, oh, like, what is <laughs> happening here? <laughs> You know, she's so nice and just so passionate, and I was just like, I'm going to sit here and just geek about you the entire time because you're like so inspirational with both Ahsoka and like what she's doing with her universe yeah. and creatively and just everything. And so I, it was all just a blur. I don't remember what I talked about. I hope <laughs> I was coherent. Um, yeah, you did pretty good. <laughs> I, yeah, so I was probably shaking the whole time, and we talked so much. I don't even remember what got cut out, but... You know, I know that she had seen um, some of my tattoos that I had gotten oh, that yes. are Ahsoka based and that she loved those. Um, so and then I, I took off the Padawan braid that, you know, mine's magnets so I can take it off and oh, I handed it to her smart. and she almost broke down. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's why I did it. Well done. Well done. I have those feels with Anakin's that all yeah. run across the cons. <laughs> that is genius. To be so. like, oh, Ahsoka, take off. <laughs> well done. <laughs> this is what I mean. It's like these things happen, but you were so ready beforehand that it's like, <laughs> of course it happened. There was no other option to where it wouldn't happen with this kind of stuff. Like, I don't even remember coming up with that idea. I was just like, yeah, of course I'll use jewelry magnets to make it detachable. Like, why wouldn't I? Obviously. Like, that is incredible. And so, it's, and it was it's, really cool. and it's a, such a short amount of time, too. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Wow. There was paint drying on the headpiece driving down to celebration too, so it was like right down to the wire. Yeah, it makes for a better story. That's the thing. Wow, man, what a way! What a way! Wow, it's been crazy. That is incredible, and I just realized we've been talking for over an hour and a half. Yes, <laughs> that's amazing. Because all I'm my s- crazy Star Wars stories. I love it. I absolutely love it. And uh, wow. I'm just going to sit with that for a while. That's amazing. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, so, you know what? I'm just, that's a, that's a high note. That's a high note. We're going to take it out here. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Thank this, you for having me. Absolutely. This was a really good time. I had fun. I hope you had fun. Yeah, it's um, fun to relive those memories. Yeah, of course. You're like, no, like that, well, that was real. Yeah, like, it's fun just real. to listen to them. I can't even imagine. Wow. Amazing. I'm still processing them, so if I figure it out what it feels like one day, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. Keep me posted on that. <laughs> uh, where can people find you online? Um, let's see. I am on Instagram as Call Me Snips. Um, Gold. Where else am I at? I hope to launch a YouTube channel soon with like tutorials and videos and stuff. Um, and then I think on Facebook I am still under Nine Lives Cosplay, which cool. was my name before I kind of soak it everything up. So. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Nothing wrong with that. Well, yeah. thank you again. Thank this you. Was a whole lot of fun. And.